Good evening, all. I'm Rapstein, and here we are on Tuesday, the 8th of August, 2023, 5.30 p.m. Central Time. So the gold market's still under pressure, as you can see. And why? Because the dollar was up another 50 points. Currencies are wobbling against it. In the stock indices, we woke up and we saw that Moody's had done a shift and had downgraded uh, as many as 10 banks. And then it's put warning out to several of the very big boys. So that's happening. Are they too little, too late? Don't know. You know, they keep saying that they're doing this for a reason. And real estate markets, the commercial real estate. One of the things I'm reading about that I think has promise is eventually these landlords will get wiped out in areas that just aren't going to come back. That, that's how it's going to be. And then the property value becomes the key. Is the land value worth more than the building itself? And what is the mortgage on it? These things will end up changing hands in a way that they'll get repurposed. Repurposed might be taking these buildings down, but not all of them do that. I'm shocked to find in downtown Chicago, some of the buildings have suddenly become farms. I know you find that hard to believe, so did I. But aquatic farms are going in on 60, 70,000 feet of office buildings, and they are repurposing because they can't rent them out. Might as well find another use for it, and away you go. I'm not saying it's everywhere, but I keep reading about it because what are you going to do with all this? When we look at the gold market, we had come up about three weeks ago, as you could see, and then came down again in this market. We've been here. We've done that. This is a zone the market's visited before. The trend is clearly down. You can see that once you started with these peaks and you've had a series of them, lower highs with lower lows, we talked about where could the market find support. And way back when, as we were over here, we were saying, well, maybe it's going to go down to the 200-day average. You know, it's a possibility, wherever the Bollinger Band is at that time. And look at how they're together right here. I mean, to me, this is classic because you're not embedded this is where I give you that elbow in the side and I go, you got to cover shorts. Uh, that doesn't mean you're buying in any manner, but it is certainly not a spot that I would teach that you're adding to shorts. Look at how the silver market is losing to the gold. It's, it's literally day after day. So once the market crossed over just under the 80 level, you're up to 84.30. And you see in this chart that you're very ugly. This is called the Gorilla Glue trade. And it's different than what's going on in the gold. You hit the Bollinger Band every day. You fought your battle for three days, right? See them right through here at the 200 and the 80, and then you kept falling. Well, each day you've hit that Bollinger Band. So as long as it locks in, it starts dragging. And what could happen here very soon is you can't count today because we don't know how the market's going to finish up on Wednesday. But we do know that both numbers were under 20 yesterday. They were not the day before, as you can see. So we're extended. We could embed over the next few days. You're not there. Again, it's very difficult to want to press the short side in those markets. Look at how this copper went from 402 back to 372 in all of a week and a half. And as it was up there, I kept saying, I don't know what to do. There's another story, though. The market's going to the upper band, to the lower band, and it's oversold. Uh-uh. A lot of these markets, one after the other, my friends, not tradable. It's like dog days of summer right now. You're getting waves up and down and not the easiest waves to trade. The market that's locking in, again, on the downside, continues to be the platinum. I've given you all the reasons why. Are we embedding? Well, both numbers were under, uh, let's see. Can't count Wednesday. We're under 20 today. We're there on day before. So that means you weren't there the day before that, which was Friday. So you got Monday, Tuesday. If tomorrow it gets another one, then we're embedded. And then given a good rally, if you can get one, that becomes a sell opportunity, but not here. In the dollar index, you keep fighting the battle between the 100-day average up, to the, up here. You got some big resistance at the 200-day average and sitting here at the upper Bollinger Band. I just look for the market to be caught there. Did we embed? Well, remember, this is still closed. So Tuesday's numbers were both over 80. The day before, they were both not over 80. 
got a 78 reading. See that? Let's come back over here. And the day before, a 77. You're just in an overbought market that's trying to embed again, but isn't there. So you got to be very careful with that. Now, in these stock indices, this is fitting right in with what I had done on my special report, which is going to go off our website tomorrow. So if you'd like to see the special report where I give you the seasonals as to what all four of the major stock indices do, the Dow, the Russell, the S&P 500, and the, um, which one did I miss in there? NASDAQ. All four of those, is there, they're in there. And I go back uh, somewhere between a 20 and 25 year line on one set, and that's because of how long they've been trading. The next will be a 15 year period, and the next will be a five. That really takes into account the pandemic when you look at the five. You take out two of those years and you can see where you've been. They go back to 2022 on back. That's how you do this. And then at the end of this year, you can add that to the uh, to the files. So each one will expand out again even further. But I, I like to keep a 15-year file. I like a five. I don't let them expand on that. And I like to get them all even. I don't know that you have to go more than 20. I've seen 30s on a lot of them. But... It's so historical, I'm not sure that it has a real meaning anymore. And what I look for is I'm showing you on each one, day by day, by the way, what the market does between August as it gets into the Christmas time frame. And I walk you through and give you the idea of where is weakness typically show up? When doesn't it show? Which ones go with what the public thinks and don't go with it? How do you get the report? Move your cursor up to the top up here. That's one way. Go to our website at irapstein.com under the word research is another. If you have trouble, call my staff. But after tomorrow, it won't be on the website. So do it now. Have yourselves a great evening. I'll see you in the morning.